Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC. Thanks a lot for watching, really appreciate it. Um, if you are watching this and you haven't liked or subscribed to the video uh, and my channel, then please uh, have a look at doing that. It doesn't cost you a single penny to subscribe, um, but it really does help us uh, YouTubers trying to grow our channels and, and ultimately you know, be able to do more videos like this. And talking about today's video, we have the free wing motion I'm talking about today's video we have the free wing um, from motion RC mig 15 64 mil EDF which uh, some people say is a, a toss and boss plane so it's a nice little plane no undercarriage of course that you just chuck into the air and get flying so without further ado Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, as you can see from this, this is literally uh, through the post. I have not opened this yet. So this is uh, uncharted territory. I've not taken a, a sneak peek or anything like that. So we'll get stuck into this. So there should be uh, the MIG, and I did order some glue as well for this, so uh, that should be in there. So let's get rid of this. Well, it's not a very exciting box, is it? It's just a plain white box. But there we go. It does. There is a little sticker here that says MIG 15. So. Here we go. Out she comes. Aha. For a minute there, I thought they'd actually forgotten to put this in. But uh, yeah, I've got a uh, packet of foam tack. It's like the uh, bigger bottle I decided to get. But uh, I have heard with this, if you, if you leave it too long, it goes off. So, but anyway, the amount of models I've got shouldn't be an issue. You do also get some epoxy in the kit, uh, but this is that's part of the kit. That's not something I've ordered. So we'll stick that up there. A nice little note. They always do this motion. I see they always put thank you on the uh, the little uh, packing slip there. So that's uh, it's always good to see. So nice small little model. So you know, obviously the box isn't too big, um, so it all fits on one level like this. The first thing you see. Uh, which is always nice to see um you know hobby king don't tend to include manuals but of course you can always download them but uh, yeah this has got a manual included in the box which is good uh so let's just have a quick look at the specs so this is a, a small park flyer type model although i won't be flying at the park i will be flying at my flying field the 28 inch uh, wingspan 28 inch fuselage length it's got 64 mil edf going to weigh about 524 grams, uh, 4,300 kV outrunner brushless motor and it runs off three cell um, with a 20, 20 amp, uh, no sorry 30 amp ESC, um, it's got three 9 gram servos built in and um, I think the recommended uh, battery for this is a 2200 milliamp um, 3S which is great because most people have got loads of those stored away. So what we've got then, first thing here is we've got some, uh, a little bit of pack in there, but we've got some um, underwing fuel tanks um, with some skid plates which need gluing on. Um, I actually, uh, I'm going to leave these off I think for the first few flights because um, I think from watching a few videos they, they do cause a little bit of extra drag obviously, I mean they're bound to. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure, they're, they're obviously, I don't think they're very scale, they, they seem to look way too big for the model. Uh, I might be wrong there, but that's, that's my opinion anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm going to leave those off, uh, at least initially. And we've got the canopy there, with the magnets installed. And um, this is the tail, so we'll just get this open. Trust the knife. 
So nice, uh, nice little sort of rudder there. There's no actual rudder on this, so so this doesn't move. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the vertical stabilizer. There's a section here. You have to run a control horn through this, um, so that they leave this section off. And then once you've run it through, you um, glue this on and then glue the tail on. It's, it's not, there's not um, screws to put this together. It is, all, it is all glue. But that's nice and straight, which is good to see. Um, and the bottom there, probably need to make sure that you roughen that up a bit and the sides, because that's, that's where the glue is going to be. And you want foam to foam for the glue surface, not. Okay, so next in the box, we've got these, uh, the uh, vertical, uh, sorry, the horizontal stabilizer or elevators. And they, they, these are tiny. They, they almost you know, look a little bit ridiculous. They're so small. Everything's individually bagged, which is always nice. So yeah, I mean, they are, they're just so small. But again, these, these just glue on. There is a little uh, spar that you have to put in uh, from memory. Now, interestingly, the reason why I'm sort of hesitating there is it seems I've had one of these before, and I'm sure last time you had to drill the hole yourself, which was a bit of a pain because um, I know it's only a hole, but to, you know, obviously you want to get it nice and level. And I don't understand why they didn't do that at the factory, but it looks like on this one they have. Um, so that's good. These are hinged, of course. Um, and nice to see they have actually got proper hinges in. So they're, they're foam, plus they've got proper um, plastic reinforcement there. So that's good to see. But even though they're not just foam hinges, you still want to give these a bit of a waggle just to loosen them up. And then we're on to the wings. Again, tiny, tiny little wings. But of course a tiny little plane. Okay, nicely packed again, individually packed and then some uh, protective foam there, which is good. And really nice paint on these. Um, really nice finish to the paint and uh, star already, I think that's probably a water-based uh, decal because um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's uh, it's just been stuck on, but it's nice to see that obviously it's already been done. And again, these hinges on the Elrons um, are plastic reinforced, which is good to see. Um, servo pre-installed, so hopefully that'll be uh, set to uh, 90 degrees. But I'll um, I'll always get the servo tester on that um, before we uh, do anything. Um, and these actually these just stick on. So I don't even think there's a spar from memory for the, for the wings. These literally just stick onto the side of the fuselage. Um, so again, I'll probably be using foam tack to put these on and I might have to just take a little bit of paint off this top edge here. That surface doesn't have any paint on, but I know these bits go inside the fuselage. Um, so we'll just roughen the paint up there. Uh, we're almost done. It's a bit of a, a bit of a quick one, this. So. Let's just get this out. Everyone loves, always loves getting the fuselage out, don't they? It's always the most exciting bit, really. I don't know why. Because, the, you know, the wings are probably the most important bit on the plane, but uh, it's always good to see the fuselage. And there it is. So, again, the paint work is absolutely superb. So this this line round here is so accurate the way they've painted it. It's, it's, you can't ask for more than that. It's spot on. There's no chips in the paint whatsoever. Definitely has a good quality feel to it. And then again, you've got these water-based um, decals already applied, which is which is great because uh, you know we uh, it's part of model building, but no one really likes putting decals on. I don't think. Um, Push rods pre-installed, um, so they're there. As I say, the, this right-hand one, you have to sort of feed through that vertical stabilizer uh, with that cut-off section. And it's good to see that it's got an XT60 on because on the box, I think it says it's got a Dean's connector. And I couldn't remember whether I swapped it last time around, but um, yeah, this has got an XT60 and there's that 30 amp PSC. That's all pre-installed, um, cable tied in as well. So that's not going to go anywhere. 
And the battery bay in this is pretty big. There's certainly plenty of room there for a, a 2200 milliamp 3S. Yeah, so you've just got the single servo in there for the elevator. Um, both of these push rods go to each side of the elevator. Uh, and on the vertical stabilizer, as you saw, you have to um, just put, feed this through uh, with that little cutout. And then once you've got it, uh, the vertical stabilizer glued in place, then you, you put that uh, little piece, you glue that little piece back on. Um, and as you can see here, this is all completely painted. And this is, this is where your vertical stabilizer is going to glue to. So you definitely want to be uh, sanding that paint off there because, um, you know, it's pretty fundamental that that doesn't come off. Um, and it is just a completely paint, painted surface. It would have been nice um, if maybe they could have mashed that off. Um, I think it does say in the instructions to sand it down. But um, yeah, it would have been quite nice to see that masked off and then you wouldn't have had to worry about that. But uh, can't really complain about the paint, as I say, because it is a really good finish. Um, yeah, so the wings, there isn't a spar um, that goes through the fuselage anyway. So you've just got the slots there for the uh, aileron cables, the servo extension leads to put in. This is really long. I don't know why they, they leave it like that, I guess, for a bit of adjustment. But they have... Um, fastened it down so you will need to trim these once you've got it set up right after you've put the tail on and then the fan you can see it in there let's just see if i can get you a view yeah there you go there's a five bladed fan um obviously with a five bladed fan you don't quite get that jet sound but um from the videos i've seen with these it does sound um, pretty good to be fair. Where, the last one I had, I um, actually replaced it before I even flew it. I replaced it with a 12 bladed fan, um, which seemed like a good idea at the time, but in hindsight, wasn't the best idea. Sounded brilliant, but um, I was literally probably getting two and a half minutes um, out of the um, the battery on that that fan and ESC that I used. So this one, I'm just going to leave it absolutely stock um, and just go with the five bladed fan. So let's just have a quick look at one of the wings. Let's just feed this through here. These are a nice fit. Um, it seems a bit weird just literally gluing these in place, but um, they are a pretty good fit from memory. So I need to just need to get that servo lead in there a bit better. That's it. So there we go. Nice and snug in there. Uh, and they did feel nice and solid on the last one, so there was no concerns around that. Uh, and I did have a couple of botched hand launches, and um, you know the wings never once looked like they were going to come loose or anything like that. So yeah, simple really. Uh, the build is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, just gluing a few surfaces on, glue the wings on, and we're away. There's a few nice details that they've put as well, some panel lines, and they've even got the little air brakes on the, that you have on the MiG-15 in the back there. Obviously, they don't work. They're just um, moulded into the foam. Um, well, that's quite nice to see. Uh, hatch here, two screws. That comes out so you can get to the EDF. And then this section here with the, the guns are... Um, this is a plastic piece, which is quite nice because that's going to help when you bring it in. It's a belly lander, of course. It has no undercarriage. And there's just a little skid, plastic skid there on the back as well, which is uh, which is good. Uh, and then last thing to show you is just the obligatory bag of hardware. So we've got in here, there's the little tube that you might be able to just about see there. Um, that's the little tube for the, uh, for the tail, the horizontal uh, stabilizer, just to connect those two together. As I say, last time I remember having to drill that out myself, but I think they've, uh, they've done it for you this time, it looks like, which is great. Uh, a couple of servo X, then a servo Y lead for the uh, ailerons. Uh, control horns, which are the ones which screw through and they have a plate on the other side, so that's good to see, they're nice and secure. And the uh, control clevises that they've included are um, they're just plastic ones, but what they have done is they've put the um, the little bit of sort of um, silicon banding on there, which is really good to see. So you don't have to do that, um, which keeps these nice and secure. And even with crevices that don't come with those, I always cut a piece of fuel tube um, and 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 put that over just to keep it secure. But you don't have to on this, which is great. Uh, yeah, and then there's just some the servo. 
connectors there to connect the little push rods um, to the servo arms or sorry no they'll be for the tail actually um, because the um, the push rods for the uh, ailerons are just uh, Z bend. So uh, yeah, that is it. Pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think there's too much more to say about it other than um, looking forward to getting this put together. I am going to be putting in my, well, I've got a couple of these now, but trusty uh, Zoe HD co-pilot with a FreeSky R XSR S bus receiver. Um, so that's a nice and small little package that will fit in there. And the reason for doing that is purely the only reason I, I really use these is for the hand launch capability, um, which works brilliantly and I will video it. Um, you basically just throw the model and a couple of seconds after it's left your hand, you need to give it a good throw so it does maintain a bit of um, flight as it were. Um, but then the motor kicks in and it off it goes and it, it, it climbs out sort of straight and up and then it starts to bank as it does the uh, the return to home circle um, but what I've found is that you get enough time on that climb out to switch it into manual mode and then you just take control over it because uh, one of the things you do have to watch with the co-pilot launch feature in the return to home is it obviously doesn't really care about any um, rules that you might have at your club about flying over the pits area uh, or anything like that and, and this does Often when I fly at my local field, there's no one there, so it's not a problem. But it does tend to do a relatively big arc that can go over the pits. Um, but uh, yeah, you get time as it as it as it climbs out. Um, the other thing you get with the co-pilot is the return to home pe uh, feature, which you just configure on on the, the three position switch. Um, and the nice thing about that on a model like this, because this is pretty small, and you could quite easily lose. Um, and it's going to be fast as well, so uh, you could quite easily lose track of the model or the orientation of the model. You just flick that switch and you know it's going to go into return to home and just start circling around. So it is a nice little safety net to have. Um, and for the cost of these things and the fact that you can just use a tiny little uh, S-Bus receiver, doesn't really take any more room up. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be putting in it. So, next thing will be a quick build video of this uh, which I'll be recording um, after I've done this so all that's left for me to say once again is thanks very much for watching and please like and subscribe and uh, um, hope to see you again soon cheers